We good? Good morning and happy Groundhog Day to each of you. I'm anxious to see what Essex Ed's prediction is today at the Turtleback Zoo. Uh, I am joined uh, and honored to be joined by the woman on my right, the Commissioner of the Department of Transportation, Diane Gutierrez Scacchetti. To my left, Superintendent of the State Police, Colonel Pat Callahan. To Diane's right, the President of the Board of Public Utilities, Joe Fiordaliso. And to Pat's left, the Director of the Office of Homeland Security and Preparedness, Jared Maples. So we have had quite a 36 plus hour period with this storm. The system is finally pulling away this afternoon and into the evening. And while further accumulate, accumulations should not be anything like the rates that we saw yesterday, we should continue to see precipitation across the state for the better part of today and into the evening. The state of emergency remains in effect and I reiterate that unless you need to be out on the roads, please stay in. Some of the snow totals across the state are in incredibly impressive, uh, with more than 30 inches reported in parts of Morris and Sussex counties and two feet plus in many other areas. We were having a discussion upstairs, I think you'd have to go back maybe to 2010, but probably to 1996 uh, to get a storm with the same level of ferocity, Andrew, as this one had. So this was a big one. There are currently just under 2,000 households without power statewide. Joe will give us a broader update on power, but allow me to personally thank the women and men in the trucks working to get power back to families. I have to say the number, Joe, you'll tell us what it is, but it never got north of 5,000. Um, and if you were to still look for positive surprises in this storm, that's number one for me uh, in the sense that with the high wind we had yesterday afternoon and the snow driving down, um, and I want to thank the, the utilities themselves as well as the women and men who work for them and are trying still to get folks back into power. There are literally on the roads thousands of plows, spreaders, and other pieces of equipment currently in use to clear our roads and the state, county, local toll road authority and private contractor crews are continuing their work so we can get back up and running tomorrow. This has been an all hands on deck storm and these teams have been working around the clock to keep up with the snow and sleet and Diane, they have done an extraordinary job. Um, this is, you know, if you're comparing this to two storms, uh, one of which is 11 years ago, the other one is 25 years ago, so say a one every eight or 10 year storm, to have the roads right out in front of us on the parkway by example, uh, clear down to the blacktop, the morning, not after, but the, the second morning of the storm that is still ongoing is an extraordinary accomplishment. Hats off to the team. And again, folks, if you don't have to be out today, don't go out. Let these crews do their job safely, unimpeded and undistracted. The best way you can do that is to stay in. There's a lot of shoulder work still, a lot of ramp work. We discussed as well potential flooding that may come out of that. We've had some flooding in places like Manasquan and, and, and other points on the shore. Um, so again, if you can stay home, we, we really want you to stay home today. Let them finish their jobs. The commercial vehicle restriction for tractor trailers, empty, straight CDL weighted trucks, passenger vehicles towing trailers, including boats, motorcycles, and recreational vehicles along our interstate highways remains in place, but uh, we're going to lift it at noon today, at noon today. Uh, and, and a reminder that this restriction does not apply and has not applied to the Turnpike Parkway or Atlantic City Expressway. Stormwide, Pat, you'll give some more color on this. New Jersey State Troopers, again, have done an extraordinary job, as have all of our first responders. Troopers have uh, attended to 743 accidents and responded to 1,362 motorist aids calls. And there have certainly been many other similar calls to local responders. And we thank not just the troopers, uh, but the DOT team and all of our first responders who spent time, um, who spent the storm rather on the job. Diane reminds me in the non-parkway, non-turnpike um, uh, highways that they're responsible for, they had another 382 motorist aid uh, calls and on the turnpike and parkway another 1,122. So you add all that up, that gets to about, about 2,500 or more motorist aid calls since this storm started. Diane will give us the situation on our roads for current road conditions. Your fastest resources uh, will be to find the NJDOT on Facebook, on Twitter, at New Jersey DOT, and at 511NJ 
nj.org, 511nj.org. But again, even as the storm moves away, please don't yet venture out onto the roads unless you have to, unless you absolutely have to. Let the crews complete their jobs. NJ Transit, uh, rail and bus service is starting back up. Most services in South Jersey are now back and operational. Things are gonna take a little bit more time getting back to normal in Central and North Jersey due to the snow totals. The Northeast Corridor, North Jersey Coast and Raritan Valley Lines returned to service at 9 a.m. on what they call a level two severe weather schedule. And the Atlantic City Rail Line continues to operate on a weekday schedule. All other rail lines remain suspended until further notice as weather conditions permit. The Hudson Bergen light rail is operating on a weekend schedule and the river line is operating on a Sunday schedule. The Newark light rail is expected to return to service sometime this afternoon. Bus lines in central and North Jersey will remain suspended until further notice as road conditions permit. NJ Transit continues to work closely with local and county agencies to coordinate with their snow removal schedules. Access link services are operational in Region 3 in South Jersey, but remain suspended until further notice in all other regions in Central and North Jersey, dependent upon local road conditions. NJ Transit will offer system-wide cross-honoring today, meaning your transit ticket or pass will be good on any mode of NJ Transit service, including private carrier buses and PATH service at Hoboken and 33rd Street in New York City. PATH service in Newark remains suspended and will not be available for NJ Transit customers. NJ Transit will continue to provide updates throughout the day and I encourage you to visit them at njtransit.com or on Facebook and Twitter at NJ Transit. And again, we are incredibly grateful for the efforts of everyone on our roads and along our rails who worked throughout the storm. Each of our vaccine mega sites is closed again today due to the weather. Anyone with an appointment for these sites has received a call, an email, or text from the operating partner at that site to be rescheduled. While the vaccination call center remains open, operators will not be scheduling appointments yet until the storm's impact is assessed. That number is 855-568-0545, 855-568-0545. I say not yet on scheduling appointments. I think they want to get to that as soon as they can. And again, please bear with them. And as you begin to dig out and help your neighbors, if there's a fire hydrant near your house, do your part, keep it accessible, remove any snow and ice so firefighters can access it in an emergency. If you happen to see a downed line, and we haven't had many of them, Joe, don't go near it, call it in. If you have a power outage in your own home, don't assume somebody else is calling that in for you, please call it in. Also, please remember to keep social distances and wear a face mask. We are still facing the pandemic and today we are announcing another 3,367 positive tests and with the heaviest of hearts, the loss of another 71 newly confirmed brothers and sisters from our New Jersey family. As of this morning, we're reporting a total of currently uh, administered 824,028 vaccinations. That splits largely. Most of them are first dose, but the second dose number is climbing. Again, 824,028. And again, those scheduled for vaccinations today at our mega sites have been contacted and rescheduled. If you schedule a vaccination at another site, please check in with that site. Our hospitals are currently treating 2,892 COVID patients with 516 ICU beds occupied, 366 ventilators currently in use. Each of those numbers, importantly, and those are the ones that we have to watch like a hawk, continue slowly but surely to head down. Uh, absent what impact these various variants may have, uh, that is very, very good news. And obviously we're watching the whole scene, especially the variants like a hawk. And in the midst of the storm yesterday, 254 live patients were discharged, while 297 COVID positive patients were admitted to our hospitals. Again, back to the storm. This is going to be finally exiting our region across the day and into this evening. And just because the snow may be letting up, please just stay in, stay safe and stay warm. Let the road crews, power crews and first responders have the roads to themselves. Further updates as well as preparedness information are all available online 
at ready.nj.gov. Ready.nj.gov, I think that's the best place to get an all-encompassing sense of what's going on. Um, or you can go to the Office Pat of Emergency Management's Facebook page and on Twitter, at ReadyNJ, at ReadyNJ. Information from a variety of official channels is also being retweeted on the state of New Jersey Twitter, at NJGov. With that, it is my pleasure to introduce our host, the Commissioner of the Department of Transportation. Uh, she and her team have done an extraordinary job over the past 48 hours, as they always do. Diane gutierrez Scacchetti. Diane? Good morning, everyone. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to thank all the New Jerseyans who cooperated with us over the last 36 hours by staying off the roads and letting our teams do their jobs. Uh, it has been an extraordinary help, and it is what allows you to look out the window and see Blacktop this morning. Again, as the governor mentioned, we ask you to continue to limit travel. Uh, we still have work to do. Uh, we're clearing shoulders. We're pushing back ramp areas. We're trying to make sure that um, the road dries, right? So that's the next part of our, our operation here. And we want to make sure we do that safely. So to the extent you don't have to be out, please don't. I do want to give a shout out to all of our crews and all of our contractor partners at the DOT, the New Jersey Turnpike Authority, South Jersey Transportation Authority, New Jersey Transit. I had an, a, a reporter ask me last night, well, how do they do this? Like, how do they gear up for this? They don't. Um, they are well trained in long duration storms and they fight snow one inch at a time, just as it's falling. And they do it until they can see that road. They take great, great pride in being able to make sure New Jersey moves. So while the storm is still with us and you can see blacktop, the roads are still slippery. So if you have to go out, we ask you to exercise extreme caution. What does that mean? It means if you're on the highways, uh, if you see a state trooper servicing a vehicle, helping a disabled, please slow down, and if it's safe, please move over. Uh, you know, we wanna make sure everybody goes home every night. Please obey the posted speed limit. Uh, when we left here yesterday, I think I saw about seven incidents between here and Interchange 7A, all single vehicles, all spinouts. Um, just because you can't see snow doesn't mean there isn't ice. So please, I ask you, whether it's our safety service patrols on the highways or Colonel Callahan's uh, women and men of New Jersey State Police, we want everyone to go home every night. We will begin to relax our uh, towing assets and allow them to get back to their normal day-to-day -day work. Um, we had extraordinary success with the trailer ban and I think it helped in making sure that the roads were clear and safe and we got our roads cleared on time. But you will still see plow teams in some areas because there is still snow falling. Please try not to pass the uh, plow team convoy. Governor went through a New Jersey transit um, and the different operating schedules for them throughout the state. I think the best thing anyone who wants to use New Jersey transit can do today is to go to njtransit.com. It is where you will get the most up-to-date information depending on your travel schedule. We wanna make sure that frontline workers can still get to where they have to go. We echo the same information we provided yesterday. Give yourself plenty of time. Uh, make sure that you have your phone charged. I know the weather looks better. Um, it is still cold, it is still icy. Um, just please be safe. I would be remiss if I did not thank my colleagues and my partners in Pennsylvania DOT, Connecticut DOT, and New York DOT. Uh, we worked very tightly together on the travel restrictions for commercial vehicles, and it really goes to show that a regional approach is the best approach when we're trying to manage traffic. If you need additional information from New Jersey DOT, please go to 511nj.org or New Jersey DOT, at New Jersey DOT on, face, on uh, Twitter. I don't do social media, so forgive me. Um, but at the end of the day, um, information is out there and accessible. Uh, my job today, the governor carried so many of the details, rightly so, but the big thanks go to the men and women who have been for the last 40, 36 to 48 hours preparing and fighting this storm, and um, they have my gratitude every day. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. Great work. Thank you, Diane. To you and your colleagues, many of them are standing in this room with us. Guys, great job to each and every one of you, and for the literally thousands out on the roads. Uh, extraordinary job. Um, with that, speaking of extraordinary job, please help me welcome the superintendent of the state police, Colonel Pat Callahan. Thank you, Governor. 
Good morning, everybody. And I'll just start off where Commissioner uh, Gutierrez Cachetti left off with a thanks. Uh, when you see that State Emergency Operations Center get cranked up and activated, uh, that's Board of Public Utilities, it's DEP, it's transit, it's DOT, um, it's health, it's human services, uh, and it's that partnership and those relationships that we build on, its, on those blue sky days that we talk about, and to watch that come uh, together once again in order to make sure that we keep uh, the citizens of New Jersey safe, it's just a tremendous source of, of pride for me. Uh, personally and professionally. Uh, to the governor's point, I think this storm may rank as maybe one of the top five. We still have to get some certifications with National Weather Service. Uh, I think it's second to the 96 storm and ahead of the 03, 2010, and 2016. So uh, a monumental storm by all accounts. Um, we did have the county OEM call this morning with our state emergency management partners. National Weather Service did confirm that we're through the teeth of it but this is still gonna last probably into the evening hours with some additional, maybe an inch or two of snow. So uh, still need to, to proceed with caution out there. Um, and I'll just close on a, a non-storm related uh, matter with regard to US Capitol Police Officer Brian Sicknick, uh, who was lost in the battle uh, at the Capitol. Uh, the state police had the honor of escorting his family down to Washington, D.C. today in coordination with the Delaware State Police and the Maryland State Police. Um, I know elected officials, they say it's lying in state. For non-elected, they say lying in honor, and Brian will lie in honor starting tonight at 930 at the Capitol, and that will continue uh, tomorrow. So the state police is humbled and honored to be a part of honoring his phenomenal life uh, as, a, as a family member from New Jersey. Thank you. Thank you, Pat, to you and your colleagues for, again, extraordinary work, and in, in your case, extraordinary leadership, and God bless Brian Sicknick, South River guy. Uh, Middlesex County, where we are right now. Former member of the New Jersey National Guard and obviously member of the Capitol Police. God rest his soul and uh, please keep his family in your prayers. So as I said at the outset, um, surprise number one for me, pleasant surprise in this case. I think the, we had the storm about right in terms of scope. The forecasters, National Weather Service did a really good job, I think, on this one. Our team did a great job sort of getting their arms around the parameters of this. Um, Joe would be the first one to say this. I think the big positive surprise is the lack of more power outages. Now, we're not out of the woods yet, so this storm has still got many hours left in it, but the winds are clearly not, not today what they were yesterday. So I think you said we had 1,980 out as we were walking down here. Hats off to the crews, the women and men, to the power companies themselves, and especially, Joe, to you and your colleagues at the Board of Public Utilities. Please help me welcome President Joe Fiordaliso. Thank you, Governor. And uh, I would just like to repeat what you, what you said. Thank you to the utilities and those people who are out there every day. The snow is not a deter deterrent to getting up there and getting people back online. It's the wind that creates the problem. And I think part of the reason why we have so many or, or a low number of people out is because of the fact that the wind was not as severe in many parts of the state as predicted, number one. And number two, the snow was lighter. It wasn't a wet snow. So not being a wet snow also contributed to fewer outages, which of course we're thrilled about. Um, the utilities were ready. They were able to get two outages quickly because of the lack of wind. And uh, so I think the top number we had out at any one time statewide was about 5,000. So we are very, very pleased. I'm very pleased uh, and uh, gratified that more of our citizens were not without power for any length of time. We certainly don't want anybody sitting in their home freezing during this kind of uh, event. And uh, again, just to reiterate what the governor indicated, please don't go any, if, if, if there is a down wire, don't go by it. If you do lose power, call your utility immediately to let them know uh, that you have lost power. Don't assume your neighbor's going to do it. 
Uh, and, and hopefully we will get through this again with the minimum amount of outages and uh, a, 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 a situation that I, I have to say, along with the governor, pleasantly surprised me. Uh, you know, 24 hours before a storm, whether it's a heavy rainstorm or a snowstorm or any nor'easter, for about 24 hours before I sit there and hold my breath because I think that we're going to have a lot of outages. But today, let's keep our fingers crossed that it continues. I think we dodged a bullet. So thank you. Amen. And Pat, you would want me to say if folks are out and they've got nowhere else to turn, call 211 to find the nearest warming center to where you live. And I know you spent a lot of time with the 211 team yesterday, so thank you for that. Joe, thank you for everything. Hats off. Last but certainly not least, the Director of the Office of Homeland Security and Preparedness to tell us about anything updated on critical infrastructure, cyber matters, or other. Please help me welcome Jared Maples. Thank you, Governor, and good morning. Uh, we've remained in constant contact with our critical infrastructure partners through the duration of the storm, and at this time there are no major issues reported. We're going to keep our private sector portal open at the State Emergency Operations Center until the activation completes, um, which hopefully will be, be in the sooner than later. Um, as far as maintaining vigilance, we want to make sure we highlight again always we're, we're concerned with domestic extremism specifically. Uh, we, we ask the public to be engaged, be aware of your surroundings, report suspicious activity. That does become important to us stopping potential, um, but it is worth to note that there is no specific or credible threat at this time. One other piece, and I think it's, it's particularly noteworthy now, and, and the Colonel talked about Officer Sicknick. Um, we're also obviously aware and have been briefed on the, the FBI Miami incident that happened this morning, terrible tragedy. Um, several agents involved in that shooting and, and are, are hurt, and, and unfortunately several have been killed. Um, we, we're keeping them in our prayers and our thoughts, and we have offered to senior FBI leadership any support and assistance that they possibly need um, that we can offer from New Jersey. Uh, finally, as you're looking through from the public at all the updates that are coming in on weather, on COVID, on vaccinations, on testing, all these other incidents that are happening. We do see upticks with storms, any of these, these surges that you see. We see upticks in people trying to take advantage, uh, whether it be fraudulently through you know, criminal acts or potentially to cause other unrest. Please think critically when you get updates, seek information from proper resources, proper media, uh, the, government, the government channels that we have available to you. Um, think critically when those links come in, when those, those updates come in. It is, it is never more important than in other emergencies like this, as the governor is often uh, fond of saying, don't take our eye off the ball in the other areas while, while an incident like a snowstorm is happening. <clears throat> and the final thing I'll say, and it's probably something you don't hear a Homeland Security director say an awful lot, um, there's been a lot of tension, there's been a lot of hate out there the last several weeks in particular, um, but there's also been a lot of hope and love. And that's the part that Homeland Security directors don't often say. But it's important now. So th this is the time to help your neighbors. Go shovel their sidewalks. Make sure the fire hydrants are clear. This is the time that we as, as Americans and certainly as New Jerseyans come together, uh, not apart. Regardless of tension, regardless of the issues, um, please do help your neighbor, your friends, your family. Be there for them. Um, I implore you. So with that said, I'll turn it back over to the governor. Thank you. I love that, I love that last theme. Um, and, and amen to that. This is a moment, and no, no state does it like ours. It's a moment to come together. Um, God bless the agents, the FBI agents, and uh, we have a very, led, led by Jared's relationship, but we all share a very strong and deep relationship with the Bureau, and they've been incredibly good partners to us. And certainly I can say during my time as governor, so our, they're in our prayers. And then of course there are the knuckleheads, <laughs> the folks who, uh, are, are not coming together, and I want to reiterate, we haven't said this in the storm until you just mentioned it, and I'm thrilled you, you mentioned it. There are, out, there are folks out there right now who are going to try to take advantage of the moment, which is hard to fathom, but there are. Uh, and so just keep, keep a weather eye on that crowd. Thankfully, it's a very vast minority, uh, but they're out there trying to scam, etc. cetera. Um, we'll take a couple of questions. Tomorrow, um, we are going to go back to our Monday, Wednesday, Friday, largely uh, COVID uh, presser. Uh, we'll probably, Diane, Joe, and Jared will probably work in a few uh, after action updates. I know there are still communities, for instance, that you're still working with. 
to get them uh, dug out. We will be doing it earlier than we normally do our, our press conferences. We'll be doing this tomorrow in Trenton, unless you hear otherwise, at 11 a.m. Uh, and that is in part so that some of us can go and begin to greet. Uh, they'll be coming back in waves, members of our National Guard, women and men who have been in Washington over the past number of weeks. And so thank you for your patience to allow us to do it at a different time tomorrow. Again, it'll be in Trenton at 11 a.m. unless you hear otherwise from me. You've been here the longest, you get the first question. What do you think the biggest challenge is moving forward in this storm? Biggest challenge moving forward in this storm, thank you for that. Um, I, would, I was prepared to say getting people's uh, power back on, and that is going to be the laser focused for the 1980, and that number, Joe, probably goes up and down uh, over the course of the, of the day. I think keeping people off the road so that they don't have a, they don't feel like they're spiking the football too early because uh, Diane and her team needs to have full access. I mentioned we had this conversation upstairs, ramps, uh, shoulders, uh, you, 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 their, their first job is to make a road passable, then get it down to blacktop, then widen the road back out to its, um, you know, its, its, its safe uh, width. I'd say that's our biggest challenge right now. Um, and they've done an extraordinary job, and they will continue to do that. But I'd, I'd love to ask people to stay, resist the temptation, stay home, let them finish that out, and hopefully tomorrow we can get back to some semblance of normalcy. Thank you. Please. Governor Murphy, good morning. Good morning. We've done on your side. We haven't met yet, but thank you for allowing questions. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Likewise. Happy to take them. It will depend on the question, of course. <laughs> With what? A Facebook group of 200 people in New Jersey who have not had their unemployment benefits. Can you tell us when and why there has been such a gap when New York and New Jersey, New York and Connecticut were able to do a seamless um, transition? People are hungry. People told us they sold their cars, they buy diapers, they're on a food line. These are hardworking people in New Jersey who haven't been paid in six weeks in a system that they came into. A couple of things. First of all, I hope the answer is soon, uh, and I know they want to hear that, and I hope that uh, as well. We have nothing but empathy and sympathy for these folks. Um, with all due respect to the comparison of other states, this is not going to make them feel any better, so this is not intended to either as an excuse or to make them feel better. I'd put our record up against any state right now, either the past year during the uh, crisis, the COVID crisis, or as a general matter. 96 plus percent of the people who are eligible have at least received a first payment. Um, we've put on the street uh, 20 plus billion dollars between our money and the federal money. Um, it is almost always the case, unless there's some sort of a system breakdown of which I'm not aware, and Dan Bryan is here, who will follow up with you to find out any specific reason for this cohort. Um, it is almost always related to the very specific issues to that person. In other words, early on in the crisis, or when there's a big shift in, in payments. So for instance, uh, the President, President Trump in this case, um, couldn't get through Congress uh, an extension of the unemployment benefits, so he went to already appropriated money in FEMA. Uh, that's a system, that's a whole new system, so there are system issues as an example when that happens. Aside from those big moments, this is almost entirely and exclusively related to the very particular circumstances of the individual. So we'd love to follow up with you. We'd be very happy to connect with that same group. Uh, I know our commissioner, Rava Sarah Angelo, would be willing to do that. Uh, and Dan Bryan will follow up with you. I don't know, sir, if it is individual. It seems like there's 65,000 people. Yeah, I'm not sure that's numbers right. So, but I, I'd like to follow up with you and, and, uh, and get to the bottom of it. Again, I, I, I will, I'm not trying to make anybody feel better uh, if they haven't gotten their money. They'll get every penny that they're rightfully owed. Um, but I'll put what we've done over the past 12 months through the Department of Labor up against any state. With that, I'm going to say thanks to Diane for hosting us. Joe, to thank you as well. Um, Pat, Jared, the whole team, you've done an extraordinary job. Keep up the great work. Folks, again, please do me one favor, stay off the roads uh, through tonight, and I think tomorrow morning we wake up in a whole different reality. Cannot thank you enough to each and every one of you who have done the right thing overwhelmingly. God bless you all. Stay safe.